We're going to start off with a few minutes of image cleanup. Let's go over to where we want to be, go into our to-do app, and we'll see that the list is kind of goofy looking like it was at the end of our last video. This is a pretty straightforward fix, so we're going to start off with uh, coming back over into the to-do list page, uh, double-clicking and going into isolation mode on the list item. And we'll come over and pick image two, and we're on style. And where we want to start is the width that defaults to a theme. We're going to just empty that out, and we're going to pick a fixed size so that everything is the same. And we'll see if 75 by 75 looks good if we save that. OK. Oh, yeah. I always uh, forget with the image when you put when you have an, a, a default image container, uh, even if it's in a component like that, the image itself in the style is contain. And contain means the whole image will be within the area you give it, which means if the aspect ratio is different, you'll have white space along the sides or along the top and bottom. So I typically, especially for a list, choose cover. And that'll make sure that everything is uniform in the list like that. So it may not show, show the whole image, but it will, when we go in, we'll see much more, if not all of it. But here, at least uh, on the list, we can get a general idea of what the image is. And uh, we also have a uniform size so that it looks good. So that takes care of that piece. Um, oh, yeah, uh, this first one. I did have a broken related to changing an image. Right now you can see that the back in the living room, do this before I get home, is there. And if I go in and retake that, you'll see that I have deleted out the name and the description. That's something I thought might happen. Probably missed it. I'm sure it's in the last video. So we're going to go ahead and fix that so that we're not changing anything in the database, I should say. When this happens, this is just local to the mobile app that we've emptied out the variables that are showing that data. But we never do save that empty state back to the database. So what we need to do is on the Properties tab of the list item. Actually, let me think through where we're doing that. I don't want to be there. Already. Uh, on the wrong page. We want to go to to do details. And when we are done updating the image, and see here we've got resize, convert, create record. So when we're setting the data variable in the custom object, we were only setting the URL. So I want to come down and find description. And we are going to get the data variable for description from itself, in essence, from the to do detail. And we also want to do the same thing for the name. So we'll go into the data and variables, the data variable, to do detail, and name. And then we'll just confirm that by making those changes. Go ahead and save, and then we'll do the exact same test we just did. Pick the item. We will take a picture. OK, I thought I picked name, but we see the description is working, uh, but the name is not. So let's come back to this variable real quick and see what it is. Oh, that's what the problem is. I did name in the wrong spot. This is probably the file name. I need to eliminate that. <laughs> what do I have? OK. I need to We'll switch it back to just be uh, static text. There we go. OK, so now let's go down far enough to pick name. 
data variable, to do detail, and name. Now, when I save it, and then go back here, and we will take a picture. <laughs> I am just not on target today, am I? So I did not get, whenever you get an object object, it usually means you missed the string value that you were shooting for. So let's see what we did here. No, oh, that is pretty good. Let's actually take a moment and make sure we get the right name. Scroll down. So to do detail description, to do detail name, in name. Don't know how many times I will have to do this to be successful, but we will do it that many times for sure. Okay. There we go. That should have taken a lot less time than it did, but there we have it. We've cleaned up our problems from last time. We have a better looking list again. We have the ability to see the images. We have the ability to change them. We don't lose our name and description. So now let's dig in a little deeper here because we've taken care of that. We've done the 75 by 75. Um, I think we're Good. We'll check to make sure, but I'm pretty sure on the detail image we're good. We might even add this action sheet. That's kind of a fun one that we haven't shown yet that gives you the, ch gives you the ability to have a choice between two options when you tap on something. And in our case, we'd use it to either let uh, the user choose to take a picture or to pick an existing picture. Uh, let's see. I'm going to go in here and make sure. I have what I want on sizing, 100%, and then, yeah, so we're good there with our sizing on the image. So let's go ahead and for the component tap, we're going to, instead of coming directly in to take photo, we're going to do that action sheet approach I was talking about. So we need to install a new component, and it's called action sheet. Go ahead and install that. And we're going to drop into that. Let me move some of this stuff out of the way. Give ourselves a little bit more space. Because I think I'm going to need an if statement to kind of work with all of this. The action sheet. Uh, gives you data based on what you pressed on the action sheet, and we'll need an if statement. So this is what it's going to look like for the action sheet. You come into the action sheet options, and you have to define the values. So the label, um, let's do open camera, and then just give it a text value. And we'll, this is what, uh, that value is what we'll check on later to know which direction they want to go. Let me add another value. And we'll just call that image library and library. Okay. And then to be able to manage what is selected, we'll need an if statement, if condition. Let me take a look at my outputs on the action sheet to make sure I've got this right. Okay, the first one is the picked action, and the last one is an error. So we're just going to worry about the pick action. And we are going to go back to properties. We're on the if condition. We are going to do a formula. And what we're going to want to do is output of another node, which is the action sheet. And we're going to want to look not at the label with the value. And so for the if statement, if we're equivalent to, so two equal signs, not one, if we're equivalent to, which is a comparison, um, camera, then it'll be a true condition. 
So a true condition comes off the initial node and I said camera, which would be photo. And so now what I also wanna add in is to the image library, debounce, debounce, still got storage, pick state, pick image firm library. And so if it's false, that means they didn't pick photo, they picked library and we'll do pick image from library. And then what I'm gonna need to do, since the resize compress right now is just taking directly from the photo, I am gonna need to put a variable in between that we work with. So let's give ourselves a little space since I'm coming from two different places. This one component can't pick the right thing. So I need to set a variable, just a page variable in this case. And that page variable is either gonna be here or here. Only one of these two will get executed, which means the page variable will have only a value coming from one location. And we're going to go create that variable. Page variable. We're going to call it selected image path. Save that and come back to our screen. Nope. Saved. Pick our image. Okay, so if it's camera, so I want the page variable that I need to select to be the image path, and I want to be the assigned value is going to be output from, I'm going to have the same problem here, aren't I? I'm just extending my problem. No, we'll just do. We will just make a change here. So I don't want to have both of these go into here because then I'm creating my same problem again. What I do want to do is create two of these and they set the same variable but from different starting locations. It's going to look like that. So I take a photo and then from I'm going to select, um, set the selected image path. I am going to pick the output from a prior node, which is going to be my photo and path. So that's simple enough. So the photo path goes here. And then on this one, I'm going to set the same variable, but it's coming from a different location this time. It is coming from the pick image from library path. And then either way, those both feed into the resize compress. Okay. So feeding into the resize compress means if I come the upper path through the take photo, I'll end up here and the lower path. I will come along, set the same variable, but with a different value and drop in here. And that means that the source image path is going to be a page variable as opposed to the output from another node. There we go. So now I have either a photo or an image library and everything else should be as it was before. Convert it to base 64, create the record, and set the to-do detail, which we set not only the image URL, but we set the description and the name. Let's go ahead and save that and uh, see what happens when we come into a to-do. And when I click on it this time, I get that bottom action sheet where I can pick an action. And if I open the camera, I get the camera. We can take a picture. And if I do the same thing again, I could use image library 
and we go with a picture of the fire pit. And there it is. Now let's just make sure that when I go out to the to-do list, leave the app, come back in. There we go. So now you get a choice of how you select that picture. It doesn't have to be the camera. It can be um, either the camera or the image library. So that is what we have for this video. Um, we'll see in the next one where we do the assign to do to a user. I'm trying to keep these a little shorter, so hopefully they're more uh, more palatable for everybody to get through in one setting. Thanks.